I'm going to pick where the handle goes and I'm going to cut it to be the straight vertical size that I want it to end at. So then as I pull it, it's going to thin and stretch and that'll create the arch that we want. Uh, and to make a dog bone handle, I've kind of pinched it into shape just like this, so fattening the ends and creating a little bit of a narrow spot in the middle. So you can see it's kind of a dog bone. And I put my slip on first and then score. And I just found that as you score with the slip already on there, it kind of pre-softens the clay a little bit and it kind of incorporates the slip into the scoring which just makes a little bit tighter seal. Slipping and scoring is not necessary, um, you know, depending on your clay body and things like that. Uh, I know some people that just get it wet and use that compression and it sticks, no problem. Uh, I haven't had any luck with that process, so I still slip and score my attachments because a little bit of extra time to have a good firm attachment for me makes a difference because I don't want to stick it on there pull it off the pot and and then pull it off the pot so we're just making a nice firm seal and I don't want to blend that seam because I, I like my handles sort of embracing the arts and crafts philosophy but I like I like it to look like it was attached kind of a, a friend of mine calls them like my little suction cup handles but, uh, you know, I don't want to blend it in and look like it just sprouted out of the side of the pot. I want it to look like a handle's been attached. So just kind of press that seal, get some good compression from the inside and the outside, stick them together because that motion is what's going to create the best seal. Then I have my water bucket. Get it wet. This might be a little bit too big. So I'm going to thin it and then narrow it and then thin it and then narrow it. And I'm not pulling all the way off because I don't want to thin this bottom connection. I just want to thin out and pull the space in between. So then what I'm doing is I'm kind of pinch pulling the outside edges to kind of straighten them out. And then I'll do that to kind of bring them back in. But that just kind of helps smooth and stretch out that clay and that's about as long as I want it to be. I'm going to do my thumb impression or my knuckle and then I'm going to, I want this handle to come up so I'm going to go ahead and start it that way. Bring it down and then now that I have that, I'm going to cut it a little bit. So I can have the angle that I want for my attachment. So I'll do that cut. And then attach it and it's going to be kind of a little one finger hole but it's not a very tall mug so I don't want you know I don't want a super big handle and there's not room to make a real tall one I could connect it down here more um, and I may try that on one of the next ones so then for the bottom connection I'm just using my thumb and uh, getting it just wet enough that I can move my slide my thumb along it while I'm applying pressure so I'm just kind of pressing it into and securing that spot that I slipped and scored and then I'm gonna press up on these two outside edges to give it that little bit of a puckered kind of a feel at the attachment and it'll also serve to catch a little bit of glaze So that's a little fatter than I wanted as far as the thickness of the handle itself, but it's a good looking handle. 
So then what that's going to be is probably a one finger handle. So it's beefy enough to support the weight of gripping the entire full cup. And the thing about handles is when they're fresh pulled and wet like this, you kind of want them to be a little, a little bit bulkier than how you want the finished handle to look because it's going to shrink in on itself and, and have a little bit less mass. So I didn't quite get my slip and score up so it's not sticking on that one little corner. Um, it'll shrink because this has already shrunk and dried some. This hasn't. This is fresh, wet clay. So it'll shrink in on itself. It'll, it'll, the negative space will shrink in some. So this proportional relationship between handle and cup will change as it dries. So I just added a little bit of slip in that one spot where it's coming loose. And I'm just going to kind of stick a little something in there to get a little bit of scoring going on and then press it back together to create a nice tight seal. extra clay down here at the attachment that I don't like so on the next one I'll be sure to mess with that but a lot of times I'll be not happy with the handle and then when by the time it's dried and bisque I'll pull it out and it'll be my favorite one because again that proportional relationship is going to change as the pot dries yeah so this is a new mug shape I haven't done before so I'm kind of playing around with the handles but I think that works I like that We change that angle a little bit so when you hold it, it at naturally resting, it holds it upright. A lot of times this curve will be off and so when people hold it, it kind of holds it at an angle. So I try and kind of do a little bit of a counter curve in the bottom of this so it still has a nice negative space. But when, you, when I think about when you're holding it, how it actually is going to rest. Is it going to you know, slump down like that or is it going to hold nicely like this? Uh, sometimes no matter what you do, it, it just holds weird in certain hands. You know, everybody holds a cup differently. My wife won't use these because she likes to wrap her hand around the cup and through the handle. Uh, but she wants it to have a handle even though she doesn't use the handle because she tucks her fingers in it. So this one she might not. She likes the ones with the taller handles. Um, that's pretty good. Might be onto something.